and so on be murdered in the broad daylight when it's not like the whole Nigeria was in support of it? Well, this is the story of how Kudirat Abiola, the wife of MKO Abiola, was brutally assassinated in broad daylight on the streets of Lagos in the year 1996. Alhaja Kudirat Abiola, she's a politically and socially active woman during her days. She was the beautiful wife of late business mogul and respected politician Chief Mashud Kashimawu Olawale Abiola. Her struggles, efforts and the tireless support she gave her husband MKU Abiola when he was incarcerated led to her untimely death. On the 4th of June 1996, Kudirat Abiola was assassinated by some gunmen in Lagos who allegedly acted on the orders of the Sani Abacha's military junta, who was once friends with her husband. Now to the whole story of how this actually happened. After President Ibrahim Babangida annulled the June 12, 1993 election, which had MKO Abiola as the winner, several riots ensued across the country, especially in the southwest. This led to the demise of President Babangida military regime and the birth of the shonekon led interim national government on the 26th of August 1993. Before Babangida even stepped down from power, he set up an interim government which was to oversee the transition of power. MKO Abiola quite did not support the interim government as it had no plan of restoring him as the president of Nigeria. The interim Nigeria government was later sacked by General Sani Abacha in 1993. At first, MKO Abiola supported Sani Abacha's military regime, hoping Abacha would return the mandate to him. But when the Abacha refused to do so, MK Abiola went ahead to declare himself as the president on the 11th of June 1994. Twelve days later, he was arrested and charged with treasonable felony. June 12th, 1993. The winner of the election now is now being tried for treason. There's no way they can be. They are just deceiving themselves. Kududirat Abiola's per-headed oil workers strike against the government, which lasted 12 months. She also gathered market women, students, and civil servants to fight for their electoral rights, which was denied on the June 12, 1993. Her effort to get her husband out of jail and restore his mandates brought her across the line of Abacha's military government. Unknown to Kudirat Abiola, she had been marked for assassination by an unknown cabal. <laughs> This was the vehicle in which Kudirat Abiola was assassinated in. So sad. On the 4th of June 1996, Alahaja Kudirat Abiola was in a white Mercedes Benz, driven by a driver, Dauda Atanda, and accompanied by her special assistant, Latif Shofolahon. It was around 9.30 a.m. on the streets of Lagos. She was going for an appointment at the Canadian High Commission. As her car slowed down on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway past the 7 up bus stop on Oregon Road in Ikeja, two cars double crossed them and six heavily armed men opened fire on Kudirat Abiola's car. The gunmen shot at close range and Kudirat's driver got his mouth and shoulders pierced by a bullet while Kudirat their main target was hit in the forehead and instantly lost consciousness. She was rushed to the Eku Hospital on Mobolaji Bank Anthony Way in Ikeja, Lagos where she eventually died between 12.15 and 12.30 p.m. However, Kudirat's personal assistant Latif Shofolahon escaped the attack on foot. Old Ninja News gathered that prior to Alahaja Kudirat Abiola's murder, there were two attempts to take her life before the plotters allegedly penetrated her network through Latif Shofolahon. After the assassination, the Abacha military government offered the sum of $45,000 to anyone who could give information leading to the arrest of the assassins. Later, Hamza al-Mustafa, the chief security officer of General Sani Abacha, was accused and convicted. Investigations into the killing traced the killer's bullet to Hamza al-Mustafa personal armory. In October 1988, Hamza al-Mustafa and Muhammad Abacha, General Abacha's son, appeared before the court both charged with the death of Kudirat Abiola. One of the assassins narrated how the Abiola network was penetrated through Latif Shufala home and how Mohammed Abacha gave him and other gunmen $10,000 to flee the country when Obasanjo's government began an investigation on Kudarat Abiola's assassination. The head of the mobile police force at the presidential villa, he also said that they were provided weapons for the operation and the presence of Mohammed Abacha. In May 2001, a federal high court in Abuja freed Mohammed Abacha on the ground that he was simply roped in on circumstantial evidence. 
Busu, Hamza al-Mustafa and Latif Shufalahon were also sentenced to death by hanging on January 30, 2012, which were later freed on July 12, 2013, on the ground that there were not enough evidence to prove them guilty. Al-Hajjah Kudira's assassination remains one of the top assassinations in Nigeria.